It is considered it a friendly fire incident but the Soviet-backed Afghan government of the time and Pakistan, 44, claimed that Soviet aircraft downed the Pakistani F-16 a claim that the New York Times and the Washington Post also reported. 45, 46, according to a Russian version of the event, the F-16 was shot down when Pakistani F. 16S encountered Soviet MiG-23 MLD's Soviet MiG-23 MLD pilots, while on a bombing raid along the Pakistani-Afghan border, reported being attacked by F-16S and then seeing one F-16 explode. It could have been downed by gunfire from a MiG whose pilot did not report the kill, because Soviet pilots were not allowed to attack Pakistani aircraft without permission. 47. In 1988, Soviet MiG-23 MLDs using R-23S, NATO, AA-7 Apex, downed two Iranian R-1J Cobras that had intruded into Afghan airspace. In a similar incident a decade earlier, on the 21st of June, 1978, a PVO MiG-23M flown by pilot Captain V. Schkinder shot down two Iranian Boeing CH-47 Chinook helicopters that had trespassed into Soviet airspace, one helicopter being dispatched by two R-60 missiles and the other by cannon fired dot air to air encounters, however, were not particularly frequent with close air support accounting for most missions flown in Afghanistan while combat air patrol and air-to-air -air escort missions comprised 15% of their total dot, 48, sorties with dumb bombs and cluster munitions were flown against a wide range of targets, while more sophisticated weaponry was not often employed because of the difficult terrain and threat of pads and a Attacks were made in pairs, with both MiGs diving at a 45-degree angle before releasing their bombs. After heavy losses in 1984-5, tactics were re-evaluated and a minimum altitude of 3,500 m, 11,480 feet, was introduced. This was later increased to 4,500 m, 14,760 feet. The accuracy of FATICS was lowered and it became impossible to use unguided rockets at all. However, this was effective at reducing losses. There were none during 1986.49. The two-seater MiG-23UB also saw service in Afghanistan, used for strike, reconnaissance and target designation. It was also used to familiarize MiG-27 pilots with flying in the hot and high conditions of Afghanistan when they were deployed there in 1988. Additionally, MiG-23 UBs sometimes acted as a makeshift AWACS aircraft, with an officer in the back seat observing and issuing commands to a strike air group below him. The concept was dubbed I am my own AWACS by the Soviet pilots involved. 50. Naval Aviation MiG-23S of the Soviet Air Force were transferred to the Soviet Navy on two occasions. In 1984 a full regiment of MiG-23S was deployed to Vietnam to escort naval patrols by Tupolev 295 aircraft. This later became the 169th Guards Composite Air Regiment. 51. They flew over 400 sorties from Kamran Air Base staying there until 1989, when the aircraft were withdrawn and returned to the Air Force. The second instance of MiG-23S serving with the Soviet Navy occurred from 1990 to 1994, when nine MiG-23UB trainers were attached to the 88th Separate Fighter Bomber Regiment of the Northern Fleet's Aviation Component to train pilots for their MiG-27S.50, Syria. Combat against Israel. Since 1973, MiG-23 on display in Israel after defection from Syria. The first MiG-23s were supplied to Syria in April 1974. The process of making the MiG-23 operational was complex and difficult because of the poor manufacturing quality and unreliability of the aircraft and the lack of technical documentation. By the end of the year, 
up to 13 Syrian MiG 23s had already been written off. 52. The first MiG 23s to see combat were export variants with many limitations. Compared to the MiG 21, the aircraft was mechanically complex and expensive and also less agile. The first interceptor variant to be exported, the MiG 23 MS, was equipped. With the same weapons system as the older MiG 21S, and its radar was particularly vulnerable to electronic countermeasures (ECM), at which the Israelis were especially proficient. 53. On the 13th of April 1974, after almost 100 days of artillery exchanges and skirmishes along the Golan Heights, Syrian helicopters delivered commandos to attack the Israeli observation post at Jebel Sheikh. This provoked heavy clashes in the air and on the ground for almost a week. On the 19th of April, 1974, Captain Al Masri, flying a MiG-23 MS on a weapons test mission, spotted a group of IAFF-4S and shot two of them down after firing three missiles. He was about to attack another F-4 with cannon fire, but was shot down by friendly fire from a SAM battery. 54. Due to this success, an additional 24 MiG-23 MS interceptors, as well as a similar number of MiG-23 BN strike variants, were delivered to Syria during the following year. In 1977, Syria bought between 28 and 30 MiG-23 MFs, and the deliveries started in 1978.55, the MiG-23 MF. MiG-23 MS and MiG-23 BN were used in combat by Syria over Lebanon between 1981 and 1985. On the 26th of April, 1981, Syria claimed that two Israeli Air Force Skyhawks attacking a camp in Sidon were shot down by two MiG-23 MSs. 54. However, Israel does not report any loss of aircraft from this incident and no loss of aircraft was reported on that date. Russian historian Vladimir Ilyin writes that the Syrians lost six MiG-23 MFs, four MiG-23 MSs and a few MiG-23 BNS in June 1982. One more MiG-23 fighter was arrested in July. The Israelis also claimed that they shot down two MiG-23s in 1985, which the Syrians denied. Overall, 11 13 Syrian MiG-23 fighter variants were lost in air combat from 1982 to 1985. Israel confirmed simply the loss of BQM-34 Fire B which was downed by Syrian MiG-23 MF on 6 June 1982. In the early 2000s, Israeli UAVs regularly flew reconnaissance missions over Lebanon, but sometime as inside Syrian airspace too. MiG-23s were often scrambled in response, and they have reportedly shot down several UAVs, starting in July 2001. Indeed, between 2001 and 2006, up to 10 Israeli UAVs were shot down over Syria each year. 56. Syrian Civil War A former Syrian Air Force MiG-23 MS became iconic of the siege of Abu al-Juhur Air Base. On 7 March 2012, Syrian rebels used a 9K115-2 Metis M anti-tank guided missile to hit the derelict MiG. Later, in March 2013 they entered in the base, showing the wall out and damaged MiG. Finally, in May 2013, the Syrian Air Force bombed it to completely destroy the wreck. Syrian MiG-23 BNS bombed the city of Aleppo on 24 July 2012, becoming the first use of fixed-wing aircraft for bombing in the Syrian Civil War. 57, 58. 59. On the 13th of August, 2012, a Syrian MiG-23 BN was reportedly shot down by the rebels of the Free Syria Nominiada Ezza, although the government claimed that it went down due to technical difficulties. 60. Since then, Syrian Air Force MiG-23s together with different.
Syrian Air Force fighter jets have regular Libyan spotted performing attack runs on Syrian insurgents, who have claimed different MiGs being shot down or destroyed on the ground on different occasions. On the 23rd of March, 2014, one Syrian MiG-23 was shot down after being hit by an AIM-9 sidewinder fired by a Turkish F-16 in the vicinity of the Syrian town of Kesab. The pilot ejected safely and was recovered by friendly forces. Turkish sources said the fighter violated Turkish airspace and it was downed after several radio warnings while approaching the border. Another Syrian MiG-23 returned to Syria after trespassing into Turkish airspace. 61 on the 15th of June 2017, one Jordanian Selex S Falco UAV was shot down by a Syrian MiG-23 MLD in the vicinity of the Syrian town of Dera. On the 16th of June. Another Selex S Falco was shot down by MiG-23 M both using R-24 R missiles. 62. On the 9th of September 2020, a Syrian MiG-23 crashed into Ez Governorate without information on the fit of its pilot. 63. Iraq. Iraq bought its first MiG-23S in 1973, in order to replace its Hawker Hunters and MiG-17F's delivery S lasted from 1974 to 1978, and consisted of 18 MiG-23MS interceptors, between 36 and 40 MiG-23 beam strike aircraft, and several MiG-23 UB trainers. The introduction of these new aircraft proved particularly difficult for the Iraqi Air Force. Training in the Soviet Union included little flight time, and since the Soviets didn't he provide any technical documentation or flight manuals, the Iraqis had to run flight testing on their own. Moreover, the handling qualities and the avionics outfit of the MiG-23 were heavily criticized, and the airframe's manufacturing quality was poor. Unsurprisingly, by 1978 at least 12 MiG-23s had been written off in accidents. An additional batch of MiG-23MS was bought in the late 1970s to compensate for the losses. 64. Iran-Iraq War, 1980-1988. Ex-Iraqi MiG-23ML in Belgrade The MiG-23 took part in the Iran-Iraq War and was used in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground roles. On the first day of the war, 22 September, both the MiG-23MS and the MiG-23BNS participated in attacks against Iranian air bases. The next day, an Iraqi MiG-23MS shot down an Iranian Northrop F-5E. However, this day also marked the first MiG-23 losses of the war. Three MiG-23 BNS were shot down by Iranian interceptors and air defenses. Several more MiG-23S were shot down in the following months, mostly MiG-23 BNS. The high losses were compounded by the embargo placed on Iraq by the Soviet Union in reaction to the war. By the end of 1980, Iraqi MiG-23 MS pilots had claimed a total of three F-5S shot down, all of them over the Iraqi airspace. 65. Despite the embargo, five MiG-23 MFs that had been delivered prior to the outbreak of the war were rushed into service in the latter half of 1981. Attempting to replicate the success of the Mirage F-1S that shot down 12 F-14 Tomcats on the 15th of November, 1981, the pilots of Iraqi MiG-23 interceptor units started trying to sneak upon the Iranian Tomcats in a similar way a few days later. However, following these two losses, the Iranian pilots had adapted their tactics. While the F-14S flew combat air patrols at high altitude, pairs of F-5S or F-4 Phantoms were positioned at low altitude in order to prevent Iraqi fighters from approaching the Tomcats unobserved. These new tactics worked out when two MiG-23 MFs were shot down by the F-14s after having been visually detected by the F-5S on the 25th of November.
Several more Iraqi fighters were lost in similar circumstances during this period. MiG-23 BN units continued suffering losses too, especially to F-14S and MIM-23 BI Hawk surface-to-air missiles. 66. The Iraqi MiG-23 BNS delivered in the 1970s only had a subpar radar warning receiver and no electronic countermeasures ECM, equipment, despite the Iraqi Air Force having paid for it. 67. In 1982, the Soviets lifted their embargo, and aircraft deliveries restarted 18 additional MiG-23 MFs were delivered, together with 18 MiG-23 BNS equipped with the ECM system requested since the 1970s. 68. In 1983, 1984, the MiG-23 MFs were used to intercept Iranian RF. Oh, the computer can uh, crash. We do splits in two minutes. So let's take a break. It's 12. Got to page 11. So we can do nothing about it. So we'll just start again. <coughs> Yes, we have to uh, start again. Drink some uh, cola. I was to this legal supermarket today and buy more cola. Buy three, three big one. Three small one. We need to eat some bread later, but let's uh, like to finish this. So it sounds like the meat. Uh, 25 and the MiG-31 is a much better aircraft but MiG-23 MiG that's an old aircraft so the MiG-23 is old, old uh, historic and uh, Russian Soviet fighter jets uh, I think just uh, one MiG-23 did crash in the United States a few days ago in the air show it did crash they have the pilot and the passengers have to eject cause the lowest power on the engine so this is why it's good to have two, two engines Two engines on a fighter jet like the MiG-25. I have to lock in again. This needs to wait need two or three minutes to start everything again. I did finish uh, downloading. I did finish downloading all the many, many different kind of aircrafts. Yes, my computer is old. I need, need two or three minutes to reboot. 